So yeah, this is pretty crazy. I mean, running PS2 games at 4X resolution on an Android device is awesome. This new Snapdragon Gen 2 is really putting power down. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most advanced gaming phone that's ever hit the market. And when I'm talking about advanced, I'm talking about, yeah, we've got more power than any other Android device that we've tested on the channel. And this thing's actually packing technology that we haven't seen in any other device so far, like Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.3. This is known as the Red Magic 8 Pro Plus. And I'm super glad that I can finally get this off my chest because I've had this in my possession for the last month testing it out and it is an absolute monster when it comes to an Android device. I personally haven't had anything on the channel that's this fast, mainly because it's using the brand new Snapdragon Gen 2 CPU. We've also got 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM and it's using UFS 4.0 storage. So yeah, I mean, this thing is super quick. So if you're familiar with these Red Magic devices, you know it doesn't look the same. They've really strayed away from their original design, which had those really rounded corners on it, and kind of went with a more square design. I personally really like what they've done here. They're packing a larger screen. It's coming in at 6.8 inches. We also don't have any cutout for the front camera because it's using an under-display camera. And as you can see, we've basically got a bezel-less design. It is an AMOLED display with a refresh rate of 120 hertz, and it looks absolutely amazing. And since we're working with the Red Magic device, we do have that built-in cooling fan, which they're really known for when it comes to their gaming phones. Plus, we've got a little bit of RGB around back here, which looks really good. Now, this can be disabled from software if you don't like it, but I kind of think it sets the rear of this thing off. Now, first thing I want to mention here is, yeah, it's 2023, and we've still got a headphone jack. We've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack over here on this side, along with one of our speakers from their dual stereo speaker setup. And I got to say, they've upped their game when it comes to the sound on this device. It does support DTSX, and this thing actually puts out some bass. I was really impressed by it. On the bottom of the device, we've got our other speaker. We've also got our SIM card tray and USB Type-C. This does support display over USB Type-C, and there's actually a couple modes that we can mess around with. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got our volume rocker and our intake vent for the built-in fan. So this is a 20,000 RPM fan. It's also got a little bit of RGB built into the fan itself, and this is really what Red Magic is known for. They've set this up so the new Snapdragon Gen 2 can run at its full potential basically indefinitely as long as that fan's going. We're not going to hit thermal throttle. We've got plenty of cooling with this unit here. And finally, over here on the right-hand side, we've got our exhaust outlet for the built-in cooling system, a power button, and you might notice we've got a little red switch here. Now, we've seen this on other Red Magic devices. Basically, this is going to bring us over to the Red Magic front end, and this is awesome for a gaming-centric phone. There's a lot of tuning options that we will be going over in this video. But we've got one more thing over here, and those are the shoulder triggers. So on a lot of these gaming devices, you'll see these, and these are actually 520 hertz, so they're very responsive, and we can basically map these in software, and they do come in really handy for first-person shooters on a mobile device like this. Now, when it comes to the specs, this thing is definitely loaded down. We've got that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 CPU, and this does have a clock up to 3.2 gigahertz. We've also got that new Adreno 740 GPU. Red Magic is offering this in two different flavors. You can pick it up with 12 or 16 gigabytes of RAM, but uh, both of them are going to utilize LP DDR5X. I've got the 16 gigabyte version here, and along with 16 gigabytes of RAM, we've also got 512 gigabytes of storage. And keep in mind, this is using the new UFS 4.0 storage, so it's definitely some of the fastest that we've seen in an Android handset so far. It's got a 6.8 inch 120 hertz AMOLED display at 2480 by 1116. We've also got Wi Fi 7, and this has been designated as Wi Fi BE, and along with that, Bluetooth has been upgraded to 5.3. It's utilizing their new dual stereo speaker setup, and it supports DTS X Ultra, a 50 megapixel rear camera with a Samsung GN5 sensor, their second generation 16 megapixel front under display camera, so we don't have any kind of cutouts or anything like that on the front of this phone. It's got a 6,000 milliamp hour battery, and in the US, it's only going to support 65 watt quick charging, but outside of the US, this is much higher. And for the operating system, we've got Android 13 with their new Red Magic UI 6.0. Now I wanted to give you a quick comparison between the last high-end phone that they released, which was the Red Magic 6S Pro. Did a review on that. 
Really nice device, but I do like the 8's design a lot better. We've kind of got a squared off design, and they've been using the rounded edges for a long time now. Glad to see a change like this. I just think it looks a lot sleeker. So when it comes to overall performance, super snappy. We've got Android 13 with Red Magic 6.0. Looking really good here. Got a little bit of a skin. Everything's very fluid. Everything's very smooth here. We kind of expected it with this newer chipset. And yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of great features built in here. A screen recorder that'll do 1080p, 60 hertz. But one of my favorite things here is uh, Red Magic Time. At least that's what they used to call it. Flipping this switch here will bring us to kind of the uh, game launcher front end. I think it looks really good. There's a couple new views and we can actually change the background now. You can add any application. It doesn't have to be a game. Anything that you've downloaded or side loaded on the phone can be added here. And we've got a lot of tweaks that we can use. Now they've added a couple new features here like Mora, which is their new Red Magic mascot. This is kind of a virtual personal assistant and you can unlock new things and new emotes with her. I mean, it's something I'll probably never use, but some people might get some use out of this. We've also got Red Magic Studio. And this comes in really handy for people who want to use a second display or a larger display. You can go wireless with it. You can actually connect this to a Windows PC and download their app. Or you could connect a hardwired USB Type-C to HDMI connection. And it does support console mode, which is something we will take a look at. But we've also got a bunch of gaming-centric plugins that we can use with games. Now, some of these only work with specific games, but a lot of the stuff will come in handy for, like, first-person shooters. We've also got a sound equalizer, so we can turn the bass up, we can turn the treble up. You can make this thing sound exactly like you want. But uh, one of my favorite things here is kind of the in-game overlay. Now, this will give us a lot of tweaks, so what I'm going to do is start up a game real quick. We'll go with something simple. Let's just say uh, Minecraft. It's right here, and I'll show you exactly what's going on with that. Okay, so I've just jumped into a little bit of gameplay, and from either side, if we swipe over, this is going to bring us our in-game overlay. Now we've got our plugins over on the left-hand side, and we've got our performance settings right here. I'm in low power mode. We can go to balanced, which is going to give us a little more performance. It's not going to kill the battery as much. Or we can go all out with rise mode, otherwise known as high gear mode. And basically, this is going to allow us to get the most out of the CPU and GPU with this new Snapdragon Gen 2. Now we've got some extra overlays over here, or you can do dual apps if you want to, but we're going to take a look at these overlays. We can turn the fan on and off. We can uh, start our recording session if we want to. We can change the refresh rate on the screen. But my favorite here is kind of the informational overlay. This will give us a real-time FPS counter so we can see exactly what's going on with our games. We can move it anywhere on screen. And I've got the refresh rate right now of the screen set to 120 hertz. Minecraft is going to run at 120 hertz on this device. I mean, it doesn't take much to run this game, and yeah, we've got more than enough power. The next thing I wanted to do was take a look at some benchmarks with this new Snapdragon Gen 2, and we're going to kind of compare it against the Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 5. Now, I ran this three times on both devices, and I've just taken the best score from each of them. On the left-hand side, we've got the new Red Magic 8 Plus with that Snapdragon Gen 2. And on the right-hand side, we've got the Red Magic 7S Pro with the Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus. Now, multi-core, we beat out the Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus every single time, but the Gen 1 Plus did come ahead by a few points in one of the tests that I ran. Now, I'm going to chalk this up to software, but when it comes to single core, I think these are going to be kind of right on par with each other. But as you can see, that multi-core score has increased significantly on the new Gen 2. Next up, we've got a GPU benchmark. I went with 3D Mark Wildlife, Snapdragon Gen 2, 3,741, on the Gen 1 Plus, 2,931. And finally, I ran Antutu. On the Gen 2, we're getting the highest score we've ever seen out of any Android handset on the market right now. Coming in with a 1,312,927. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. And if we go down the list here, you can see that, yeah, it did beat out the Gen 1 in every single one of these individual tests. So we are working with more power, and we definitely expected this from a newer chip. So personally, I'm not a huge fan of touchscreen controls, so I do like using a physical controller. And of course, you can connect a Bluetooth controller to this, no problem at all. But I wanted to test out the Razer Kishi V2. And to my surprise, I mean, it fills this controller out perfectly. The 6.8 inch display inside of this thing looks absolutely amazing. And it does work out really well if you need a physical controller. Of course, we had to test out a little more native Android gaming on this device. And here's Genshin Impact. We are maxed out right now at 60 FPS, and this is definitely some of the best performance that I've seen out of this game on Android. 
Unfortunately, we don't have the option on Android to go to 120, and we don't have great controller support, but there is a built-in mapper with the Red Magic software. It's really up to you. You could use a Bluetooth controller or something like that Razer Kishi, but just keep in mind, I mean, you can run this game at 60 all day. Here's a little 3DS emulation, and I am planning on doing a full emulation video, but uh, I will be testing out a few more here in this one. 3DS, using the Citra emulator from Google Play, this isn't a hack version or anything like that, we're at 3x resolution. This uses the OpenGL backend, and we're getting amazing 3DS emulation on the Snapdragon Gen 2. I also wanted to show off a little bit of Wii and GameCube emulation. This is the Dolphin emulator, it's actually the official version from their website. 720p with Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, not a super hard game to run, but yeah, I mean, this is great that we can run this at 720p on a handheld device like this. But of course, as a lot of us know, there are harder to emulate games when it comes to the Dolphin emulator, and one that comes to mind is F-Zero GX, especially on an ARM-based chip. But here it is, running in the Firefield track, which definitely gives these little chips a run for its money, at 720p with the OpenGL back end. We're not having an issue here with F-Zero GX on the Snapdragon Gen 2. This is really awesome. Moving over to some PS2 emulation using Ether SX2, we've got Gran Turismo 4 at 4X resolution. I haven't been able to run this game at 4X on any Android device that I've ever tested, so yeah, this just shows you how powerful this thing is. And I've got another one to show you at 4X, which was way more impressive than this one. But I'd actually like to show you that in console mode. So before we move over there, let's check out some Switch emulation using the sky. This is the fact that it does support display over USB Type-C. Now we've got a couple different modes. As soon as we plug it in, we're going to be in mirror mode. We've got a wired connection. We don't have to worry about any kind of lag. Now you could cast this if you want to, but you will run into latency. But we've got another mode here known as console mode. As soon as we flip this switch, we're now in console mode gives us a full screen picture, it's going to scale all of our applications up, and this is running at 1440p. It supports controllers, it supports a mouse and keyboard, and by the way, this monitor here does have USB Type-C video in, but you could always use a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. So basically, once you plug this phone in, we've got a console. We can play our favorite native Android games. We'll launch one here. And as you can see, no black bars on the top or the bottom. It's going to scale it up to 16 by 9 or whatever uh, aspect ratio your monitor is. I think it'll do 16 by 10 and 16 by 9. I haven't tested an ultra wide monitor just yet. We've still got some performance functionality down here in the lower left hand corner so we can go to rise mode with it. But I do think that this is great, especially for emulation. And we've also got some settings for our keyboard and controller. We can change the sensitivity of our mouse, or you could use the built-in trackpad on the phone screen. We're going to test out Asphalt 9 here, and I've got an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. And basically, any emulator or game is going to scale up just fine. And by the way, we do have plugins to kind of map our controller in case the game doesn't natively support controllers. Or you could even map a keyboard and mouse if you wanted to. Really awesome features here built in with the Red Magic 8 Pro. But my favorite thing to do on this external display is emulation. Ether SX2 with some more PS2. And this is the game I was talking about. God of War 2. As we know, even on the Snapdragon Gen 1, this one did struggle a bit. But on the Gen 2, we're actually at 4x resolution with the OpenGL back in, and we're running this at full speed, 60 FPS. I mean, this thing is definitely going to be an emulation beast, and I will have a full video coming up soon. So yeah, this is definitely putting down some really great performance. It is the most powerful Android device that we've tested on the channel so far, and in six months, maybe a year, we'll get something a bit more powerful. That's how technology works. But as it sits right now, the Snapdragon Gen 2 paired up with this cooling system here is an absolute powerhouse, and the Red Magic 8 Pro is definitely a gaming phone. I love the new design. I'm glad they didn't go with the old Red Magic look on this one here. I think it was time for a change, and I think they did a great job. I personally love the screen that they have here. I'm a huge fan of these AMOLED displays, and coming in at 6.8 inches at 120 hertz is perfect for a mobile device like this. Now, I know some people out there might be upset that they didn't go with 144 or 165, but there's not a lot of stuff that we're going to be running at 144 and 165 on a mobile device right now. But overall, I think it's a great device, and like I mentioned, I will have a full emulation video coming up, so if there's anything specific you want to see, let me know in the comments below, and I wouldn't mind making, you know, a full console mode video, testing out a bunch of stuff there for you. 
if that's something you're interested in, it'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe think about turning on notifications so you know when I post the next one. But that's going to wrap it up for my first look video. If you're interested in learning more about the Red Magic 8 Pro Plus or even the Red Magic 8 Pro, I'll leave links to their website the in the description. And I'd also like to know what you thought about the performance of this new Let's Snapdragon go, Gen 2 in the comments below. I was actually hoping for a little better single core performance when it comes to those synthetic benchmarks, but you know, I'm going to chalk it up the software right now. There is a chance we will get a little better uh, when you compare it to the Snapdragon Gen 1 Plus. Still on some early firmware here, but for what we have, this thing is definitely putting the power down. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.